welcome to the Burrow. This is the fifth video in our series on the Burrows and Badgers skirmish game and in it we'll be taking a look at the more advanced actions your Warband's characters can perform. Taking a look at the search action, the hide action and also at ambushing. We're going to look at routing as well. What happens when your Warband turns tail and runs away. The search action. Now we're going to have a look at two versions of the search action here. Um, there's the version that's in the Burrows and Badgers rulebook, but we also published a slightly altered version of the rule in the Warren Percy Affair supplement. So we'll have a look at both. And to complicate things a little more, there's actually two ways to search. You can either search for hidden enemies, or you can search an area for an item. Here's the rulebook version. A model making a search action for a hidden item, such as searching a terrain piece for a scenario-specific object, can make one move. The move has to end with the model in base contact with the terrain piece they're going to be searching. If the model doesn't move, then they gain a plus two bonus to the search roll-off. So you make a roll-off using your character's awareness statistic against the target number of the hidden item. There's a few sample target numbers in the rulebook, but generally that number will be given in the scenario's notes. Whichever scenario you're playing, it'll tell you what that is. If the roll-off succeeds, then the item has been found and you can add it to your character's equipment. If you fail, then no need to worry, because there's a plus one bonus for each successive turn you spend searching, and you also get a plus one bonus for any friendly models who are also making a search action that turn on the same terrain piece. So it gets easier to find stuff the longer you look. So that's how you search for a hidden item, but you'll also have to make search actions to look for hidden enemies too. Now if your character's making a search action for a hidden enemy, they cannot move. This is the only action in which you can't make a move first. The searching model has to have at least partial line of sight to the hidden enemy model, or be within six inches of it. So if you can't see it, and you're just around a corner, but you're within six inches, then you can still make the search action. You do it by making a roll-off using your awareness stat against the concealment stat of the hidden enemy. If the roll-off is a success, then you've spotted them, the hidden enemy is revealed, and they no longer count as hidden. There's a bunch of possible modifiers to this. You'll find them on page 32 of the rulebook. But basically, they all make it harder if the hidden model hasn't moved this turn, and easier if you're really close to them or you've got a lot of friends helping you look. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we did actually make a change to this rule in our supplement, The Warren Percy Affair, and I'd suggest people do use this change. Searching for hidden items stays exactly the same, and searching for hidden enemies is basically the same, but with the following addition. Once you've made the roll-off, then the searching model may make one move. Alternatively, instead of moving, they may shoot, or instead of moving, they may cast a spell. Now, note your character doesn't gain the plus two for standing still in that case, they still count as having moved. Basically, they've done the search. Now, this option of being able to move, shoot, or cast a spell after searching stops it feeling like a waste of time, which it did often feel like before. The hide action. All right, so if you can search for hidden characters, there has to be a way for characters to hide, and that's where the hide action comes in. It's a useful action because a hidden model cannot be attacked, shot at, or targeted by spells, except by friendly magic users. And they also count as being ready to ambush if the opportunity comes up. So hiding has a lot of upsides. The downside is that apart from ambushing, you don't have any other way to affect the game. So, how does the hide action work? Well, a model making a hide action may make one move. However, the move has to end with the hiding model more than two inches away from any enemies and in base contact with the terrain piece or totally out of line of sight of any enemy models. Then you automatically become hidden. If you do move first, it's important to keep a note of how far you've moved because if you've got any movement left over, you can use that during ambushing. It's also important to note that you stay hidden until the next time you perform an action or you get spotted by a search action. That means you could hide in one game turn 
and still be hidden in the next game turn, provided you don't act in between. So it's pretty straightforward. Provided you're in base contact with a terrain piece or totally out of the enemy's line of sight, you declare that you're taking a hide action and that's it, you're hidden. The model stays where it is on the tabletop, you don't remove the model. You might want to use a marker or something to show hidden status because it can be easy to forget who's hidden and who isn't. But we leave the model on the table because that character has not become invisible, they're just hiding. So everyone's got a rough idea of where they are. They just don't know exactly where they are. So you leave the model there and then you roughly know where they are, but they're hidden. Enemy models can still move into base contact with a hidden model. They just can't attack, shoot or cast spells. Of course, if an enemy model does move into base contact with you while you're hidden, then they risk an ambush. And we'll have a look at that next. Ambushing. Now the ambushing, I would say, is the most advanced action. It's the most complicated one. If you're new to the game, I'd avoid using ambushing to start with at least until you've got everything else figured out. And to be fair, ambushing isn't even really an action. It's an extension of the hide action. So to ambush, your model must first be hidden. You have to have already performed a hide action. Then if an enemy model within line of sight declares either a sprint, an attack, a shoot or a cast spell action, you can make an immediate ambush if you want to, even if you've already acted during the turn. An ambush can either be an attack ambush using close combat weapons or a shoot ambush using a ranged weapon. Once your opponent has declared their action before they begin any moves or roll any dice, you may interrupt them and perform an ambush. Alternatively, you can interrupt after they move, but before any roll-offs are taken. Or in the case of a sprinting enemy, you can interrupt them before the first move, after the first move, or after the second move. And the interrupted model can continue their action afterwards, assuming they're able to do so. So basically, you can only ambush at the point an enemy could start or end a move, not partway through a move. And you must have line of sight when you do. So this means it's possible for an enemy to rush past without triggering the ambush, provided they're out of line of sight at the start and at the end of the move. When you make an attack ambush, you must have enough movement left to get into base contact with your target. If you already use some of your movement this turn while making your hide action, you can only use whatever you have left. But whether it's a attack ambush or a shoot ambush, what you do is take a roll off using your concealment stat against the target's awareness stat with the modifiers from the table on page 34. If the roll-off fails, your enemy has spotted you. You still get to make your attack, but it's treated exactly like a normal attack action or shoot action. But in addition, you suffer a minus two penalty to your roll because you failed the ambush. If you succeed at your concealment roll-off, on the other hand, you get to make a surprise attack because the enemy hasn't spotted you. You take the appropriate roll-off, so a strike roll-off for attack ambushes or a ranged roll-off for shooting ambushes with any modifiers that might apply. But in this case, the enemy doesn't get the chance to block or dodge because they haven't spotted you. So they don't roll any dice for block or for nimbleness. You roll your dice, add any modifiers, and that's the roll-off result which means a successful ambush can cause a lot of damage. Finally, once you've made an ambush, your character counts as having acted and is no longer hidden, but cannot do anything further until the next game turn. Now that's an important point. If you've carried out an ambush, can't do anything else that turn. Okay, that concludes the actions your characters can make. Let's have a quick look at routing now. Routing. If at any time a warband has 50% or more of its models taken out of action, then the player has to begin taking route roll-offs at the end of every turn. So, for example, a warband with nine members would need to roll off for routing after five of their models went out of action. The player takes a roll-off using their leader's fortitude stat against the enemy leader's presence stat. If either player's leader has been taken out of action, then use that player's second instead. If the roll-off is passed, then the game continues. But if it's failed, then that warband routes and the game counts as a loss for that player. The game ends there. 
If at any time both your leader and your second are taken out of action, then your warband has to route automatically at the end of the turn. Occasionally, both warbands will have suffered over 50% losses and will have to test for routing at the end of the turn. Now, when that happens, it doesn't matter what order you take the rolls in, but they're assumed to happen simultaneously. So if both warbands fail the roll, then both warbands will have to route and the game will end in a draw. Voluntary routing. Sometimes during a campaign, there are occasions when it'll be better to run away and live than risk fighting on and maybe have your characters die. And that's where voluntary routing comes in. Now if you want to route voluntarily, you can't do it unless three full turns of the game have been played. But once that's happened, you can route at any time without needing to make a route roll off or have suffered 50% casualties. But it has to be after three full turns of the game have been played. But if you do route voluntarily, you won't receive experience points that would normally be given for surviving the game. You'll still get any experience points from secondary objectives that you may have completed, but you don't get the ones for surviving the game. Fate points. Now all warbands start every campaign game with 10 fate points, and you can spend these at any time, whether it's during the game itself, in the pre-battle sequence, or in the post-battle sequence, and that can come in very handy for things like modifying your advance rolls to make sure you get the skills you want, or modifying your permanent injury rolls to avoid your characters dying. The way they work is this, you have to declare that you're using fate points and how many fate points you're using before you roll any dice. For each fate point you spend, you can take an extra dice of the type you would be rolling and roll that as well. And then what you do is you choose which of those dice you want to use, which would normally be the highest one. So for example, uh, if you're making an attack action and you've got a strike of d8 and you say you're going to use two fate points, then you'd roll your normal d8 strike. You'd also roll two extra d8s for the fate points and then you choose which of the dice you wanted to use. Now, you need to keep track of your fate points as you use them, so we'd suggest using counters of some kind that you can discard as you use them. Some people use sweets and simply eat them as they use the fate points. Well, that about covers the rules for actions and for routing. In our next video, we're going to have a look at playing a campaign game, how you start, um, a sample game turn, and what happens after the game has finished. Thank you for watching.